In the intricate tapestry of family relationships, the bonds that tie us together can sometimes be tested by unexpected challenges and conflicts. Such was the case for our family, where the delicate balance of love and responsibility was put to the ultimate test in the aftermath of a tragic loss. The journey that unfolded thereafter was marked by heartache, resilience, and ultimately, the unwavering commitment to prioritize the emotional well-being of a vulnerable child amidst the tumultuous waves of familial discord. Our story begins with the untimely passing of my late brother, a soul tormented by the grips of addiction. His struggle with substance abuse cast a shadow over his life, leaving behind a legacy of pain and shattered dreams. Yet, amidst the darkness, there was a glimmer of hope in the form of his young son, Freddy. As fate would have it, my husband and I found ourselves thrust into the role of caretakers for Freddy following his father's passing, embarking on a journey fraught with challenges and uncertainty. Despite the weight of our grief, we were determined to provide Freddy with the love and stability he so desperately needed in the wake of such profound loss. With Freddy's future hanging in the balance, we faced the daunting task of navigating the complexities of custody and adoption. Legal battles loomed on the horizon as we fought to secure Freddy's rights and protect his best interests in a system fraught with red tape and bureaucracy. Yet, through perseverance and unwavering determination, we emerged victorious, welcoming Freddy into our home with open arms and hearts overflowing with love. The journey to adoption was not without its challenges, but in the end, our bond with Freddy was solidified, transcending the boundaries of blood and legalities. Despite the challenges we faced, we remained steadfast in our commitment to maintaining a relationship between Freddy and his maternal grandparents, Pam and Joe. Though their daughter, Kathy, had succumbed to addiction following my brother's passing, we believed that family ties should not be severed so easily. Thus, we endeavored to foster a connection between Freddy and his grandparents, hoping to provide him with a sense of belonging and continuity amidst the upheaval of his young life. Our efforts to uphold family ties were put to the test when Pam and Joe expressed a desire to reintroduce Kathy into Freddy's life. Despite her year-long sobriety, we were hesitant to expose Freddy to the unpredictable nature of addiction and its potential repercussions. Thus, we made the difficult decision to decline their proposition, citing Freddie's well-being as our primary concern. Regrettably, our trust in Pam and Joe was shattered when they allowed Kathy to enter their home without our consent, leading to a distressing confrontation that left Freddie emotionally scarred and vulnerable. In the aftermath of the confrontation, we were faced with a difficult choice to continue exposing Freddie to the tumultuous dynamics of his maternal family or to prioritize his emotional stability above all else. Ultimately, we chose the latter, making the painful decision to cease all contact between Freddie and his grandparents. While some may view our actions as drastic, we firmly believe that protecting Freddie's emotional well-being must always take precedence, even if it means sacrificing familial ties in the process. The fallout from our decision reverberated deeply within our family, leaving wounds that may never fully heal. Pam and Joe's blatant disregard for Freddy's feelings and our wishes served as a stark reminder of the selfishness and neglect that can sometimes permeate familial relationships. Their actions had profound ramifications, not only on their relationship with Freddy but also on our own relationship with them. Yet, despite the pain and heartache we endured, our resolve to prioritize Freddy's well-being remained unshakable a testament to the strength of our commitment to his happiness and security. In a similar familial scenario, a structured approach involving reunification counseling proved beneficial. This process ensured that the children's emotional well-being remained paramount, while also providing a framework for assessing the suitability of reintroducing the absent parent into their lives. Implementing such measures could serve as a deterrent to Kathy's impulsive behavior and safeguard Freddie's emotional health. Reunification counseling, a systematic therapeutic approach aimed at facilitating the reconnection between children and absent parents, can be instrumental in addressing complex family dynamics. By prioritizing the emotional needs of the children, this process fosters a safe and supportive environment for exploring feelings, addressing unresolved issues, and rebuilding trust. Through guided sessions led by trained professionals, Reunification counseling offers a structured framework for assessing the readiness of both the children and the absent parent for reunification. This involves evaluating factors such as the parent's ability to provide a stable and nurturing environment, their commitment to addressing past conflicts and issues, 
and their willingness to prioritize the children's well-being. By engaging in reunification counseling, families like Kathy's can benefit from a guided and collaborative approach to healing and reconciliation. This process not only helps address underlying issues contributing to parental absence but also empowers families to establish healthy communication patterns, boundaries, and expectations moving forward. Furthermore, proactive measures, such as informing Freddie's school and other relevant entities of the situation, are imperative to prevent unsanctioned contact from Pam, Joe, and Kathy. Vigilance is essential in shielding Freddie from potential harm and maintaining a secure environment for him. To mitigate the risk of unauthorized contact and protect Freddie's well-being, it is essential to establish clear protocols and communication channels with relevant stakeholders, this may involve informing school administrators, teachers, and other caregivers about the family's circumstances and providing them with guidance on how to handle any attempts at unauthorized contact. In addition to external safeguards, it is crucial to prioritize Freddie's emotional needs within the family dynamic. This may involve providing him with age-appropriate explanations about the situation, offering him opportunities to express his feelings and concerns, and ensuring that he feels supported and reassured throughout the process. Regarding your own predicament, accommodating your husband's daughter and her children has undoubtedly posed significant challenges. The upheaval and strain on daily routines underscore the need for a sustainable solution. While compassion is paramount, establishing boundaries and seeking long-term arrangements that prioritize the well-being of all household members is essential. Open communication and collaborative decision-making can help navigate this complex situation and ensure the welfare of everyone involved. In navigating the complexities of blended family dynamics, it is crucial to prioritize open communication, mutual respect, and empathy. By fostering a supportive and inclusive environment, families can work together to address challenges, navigate transitions, and create a sense of belonging for all members. Through patience, understanding, and a commitment to collective well-being blended families can build strong and resilient bonds that withstand the test of time. My stepdaughter has displayed a lack of initiative in seeking viable solutions for her situation during her stay with us, which has understandably left me feeling exhausted and frustrated. Her apparent resignation to her circumstances without making any effort to explore alternative options has been disheartening. Despite my initial sympathy for her predicament, her apparent reluctance to take proactive steps towards self-improvement has been disappointing. I expressed my concerns to my husband, urging him to take action by securing alternative accommodation for his daughter and initiating efforts to establish contact with the father of her children. However, my husband hesitated, citing concerns about the additional financial strain of renting another property. While he has been contributing equally to our household expenses, he expressed reluctance to shoulder additional financial burdens. In response to his reluctance, I stood firm in my stance, insisting that my stepdaughter vacate our premises by the end of the month. I conveyed to my husband that failure to comply with this ultimatum would compel me to pursue divorce proceedings, a decision that would undoubtedly entail significant financial implications for him. While I acknowledge the complexity of the situation and the challenges it presents, I firmly believe that my stepdaughter's lack of proactive engagement necessitates decisive action. It is imperative that she takes responsibility for her own well-being and endeavors to pursue viable solutions to her predicament. The ensuing discourse in our marriage has prompted me to seek external perspectives on the matter, and I welcome constructive advice and intervention to navigate this challenging situation. The dynamics within our household have been strained as a result of my stepdaughter's presence and her apparent lack of motivation to address her situation proactively. Despite my initial hopes of offering her support and guidance, her passive attitude has left me feeling increasingly disillusioned and frustrated. In discussing the matter with my husband, it became evident that we were at odds regarding the appropriate course of action. While I advocated for firm boundaries and consequences, he expressed concerns about the potential fallout, both emotionally and financially, of forcing his daughter to leave. His reluctance to take decisive action only exacerbated my feelings of frustration and resentment. I found myself questioning the stability of our marriage and whether our differing perspectives on this matter were indicative of deeper underlying issues. As the deadline approached for my stepdaughter to vacate our premises, tensions within our household reached a boiling point. The atmosphere became charged with anxiety and uncertainty, 
as we grappled with the implications of our respective stances. Ultimately, it was a difficult decision to issue the ultimatum to my husband, knowing the potential ramifications for our relationship. However, I was compelled to prioritize my own well-being and that of our household, even if it meant facing the prospect of divorce. Moving forward, I am committed to seeking guidance and support from trusted sources to navigate this challenging chapter in our lives. While the road ahead may be fraught with obstacles, I remain hopeful that with open communication and a willingness to confront difficult truths, we can find a resolution that serves the best interests of all parties involved. My children's early departure with Cassie this weekend ended with visible distress evident on their faces. Upon inquiring, my daughter tearfully expressed her discomfort, stating that Cassie was not her mother. My son, too, appeared agitated, standing in solidarity with his sister. My gaze naturally turned to my ex, but Cassie, with unwavering conviction, asserted that now, as my ex and she were married, it was only appropriate that they address her as mom. The audacity of her proclamation bordered on the absurd, and had my children not been so visibly perturbed, I might have found it laughable. I promptly informed Cassie that my children were under no obligation to refer to her as mom and they could continue to address her as Cassie or Cassandra, should they prefer. Her response was less than receptive, accusing me of jealousy and obstructing their bonding process. In response, I reiterated that her actions were, in fact, driving my children further away. My ex implored me to mediate the situation and reconsider, but I stood firm in my conviction, refusing to coerce my children into something they clearly did not desire. Cassie's demeanor took a turn for the worse, resorting to insults prompting me to issue a stern ultimatum, leave, or I would involve the authorities. They departed, but not before threatening legal action, asserting their intent to pursue full custody. In the wake of their threats, I found myself confiding in my cousin, who voiced concerns regarding the potential trauma my children could endure if embroiled in a custody battle. Her own experiences underscored the lasting psychological impact such proceedings could have on children, even into adulthood, as evidenced by her own children's ongoing therapy. Amidst the uncertainty that now looms over me, I am torn. On one hand, my instinct is to protect my children from further distress, yet, on the other, I am hesitant to acquiesce to the unreasonable demands of my ex and Cassie. It is a precarious situation, fraught with complexity, and I find myself grappling with the best course of action. As I navigate these turbulent waters, I am acutely aware of the need to prioritize my children's emotional well-being above all else. Their distress at Cassie's insistence on being called mom is a clear indication that forcing them into such a role would only exacerbate their discomfort and alienate them further. Furthermore, I am resolute in my stance against coercion and manipulation particularly when it comes to matters as sensitive as familial relationships. My refusal to bend to Cassie's demands may have sparked conflict, but I firmly believe that standing up for my children's autonomy and emotional health is paramount. Yet, the threat of legal action looms large, casting a shadow of uncertainty over our lives. The prospect of a custody battle is daunting and the potential repercussions for my children weigh heavily on my mind. I am torn between protecting them from further turmoil and standing my ground against unjust demands. In seeking counsel from my cousin, I am reminded of the long-term consequences of such legal battles on children's mental health. The trauma inflicted by prolonged conflict and uncertainty can leave scars that persist well into adulthood, impacting their relationships, self-esteem, and overall well-being. As I weigh my options, I am mindful of the need for a measured and strategic approach. While I am prepared to fight for my children's rights and well-being, I must also consider the potential consequences of prolonged legal proceedings on their emotional health. In the end, my priority remains clear, to shield my children from harm and ensure their happiness and security. Whatever path I choose, it will be guided by a steadfast commitment to their welfare and a determination to protect them from further distress. Coral's impulsive outburst was nothing short of appalling, showcasing a blatant disregard for others' possessions and an inability to manage her emotions effectively. As she wreaked havoc upon the basement, her actions not only caused considerable damage but also inflicted emotional distress upon my daughter and disrupted the harmony of our home. In the aftermath of the chaos, I firmly expressed to Mark the necessity of holding Coral accountable for her actions. 
However, his inclination to downplay the severity of the situation and dismiss Coral's behavior as mere emotional turbulence was deeply troubling. Despite the evident need for disciplinary action, Mark's reluctance to impose consequences upon his daughter only served to exacerbate the issue. In my resolve to uphold fairness and teach responsibility, I insisted that Coral face the repercussions of her actions. When Mark faltered in his support of this decision, I stood firm, adamant that Coral's actions warranted appropriate consequences. Mark's subsequent departure, albeit temporary, underscored the gravity of our disagreement and the complexity of our predicament. As the repercussions of Coral's actions reverberated beyond the confines of our home, with Mark's ex-wife and extended family offering unsolicited criticism and condemnation, I found myself at a crossroads. The relentless barrage of reproach has left Mark reeling, grappling with doubts and insecurities regarding his role as a father. In this tumultuous aftermath, the question of whether an apology is warranted looms large. Yet, amidst the cacophony of conflicting emotions and external pressures, one truth remains resolute, Coral's actions were inexcusable, and the imperative to uphold accountability and instill discipline remains paramount. Whether an apology is extended or not, the imperative to address Coral's behavior and uphold the integrity of our household prevails above all else. It appears that your daughter's journey into motherhood has been accompanied by a series of challenges particularly concerning her interactions with your extended family. While the initial intention was to create a supportive network or village to assist her in navigating parenthood, tensions have arisen due to her increasingly stringent expectations and criticisms. Initially, the concerns raised by your daughter seemed valid, focusing on fundamental aspects such as safety and childcare practices. However, as time progressed, these concerns escalated into a pattern of nitpicking and micromanagement, which ultimately strained the relationships within the family dynamic. The sense of entitlement exhibited by your daughter, coupled with a lack of gratitude for the assistance rendered, further exacerbated the situation. In response to this escalating tension, you made the difficult decision to confront your daughter about her behavior candidly expressing your concerns and withdrawing the support of the village due to her overbearing attitude. While this may have been a challenging conversation to initiate, it was ultimately a necessary step in addressing the underlying issues and establishing boundaries. Moving forward, it may be beneficial for your daughter to reflect on the source of her behavior and consider seeking support or guidance to address any underlying anxiety or stress she may be experiencing. Additionally, fostering open communication and mutual respect within the family can help rebuild trust and facilitate a more harmonious relationship moving forward.